Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm finally doing this Real Talk Q&A. Okay, okay. I'm finally, finally doing it. So if you follow me on social media, you will know that a while ago I did an Instagram, well, rather an Insta snap of a Real Talk Q&A. And I thought that, listen guys, I know the Real Talk videos are some of my most loved videos. And then I thought that, you know what, sometimes it would be nice to just answer questions from you guys about anything that involves Real Talk. And I said, anything from anything from feminine hygiene anything from life love relationships if somebody wants to share a story and wants my opinion on it sex anything this is a channel where we are real with one another yes we talk beauty life travel um healthy living and all that jazz but at the same time i want this to be a platform where we can reach out to one another and talk as women for women my channel is directly like the aim of my channel is for women so i did this little insta snap on this q a and then i asked everybody to send in questions and that i would answer it in a video so we're here. We're finally doing this real talk Q&A. Uh, so if you would like to see the questions that I got or what kind of questions that I got and my responses to them, then you know what to do. Okay. So I'm not going to mention who sent in the questions because some of them are of a personal nature. So I've decided to make everybody anonymous. So the first question is, what is your favorite body part? That place that you look at and just go, man fabulous for me <laughs> it's such a weird question but for me um it's weird it's weird i like my eyes i love my eyes i feel like my eyes say a lot even in my pictures i i i found ways to make my eyes look tired sexy beautiful <laughs> but i think my eyes are my most defining feature my eyes and my lips is something that people seem to comment quite a lot on especially when i am uh in pictures or if i'm around someone and they're like you know what you've got a, you've actually got really nice eyes i like that and the second question was why is there a bad perception especially on women about self-pleasure really honestly i don't even know I think the way society is set up and the way stereotypes are set up it's set up in such a way that you you based on what you see you're not made to feel like you as a woman should be comfortable within yourself at whatever size age uh, color of your skin there's always something in society or out there that's supposed to make you feel like yes you're you but there's something else that's better and because of that we have that challenge that there's the stigmas that then follow something like that where if you are somebody who chooses to masturbate or you have uh, some sort of ways in which you please yourself, it's seen as, you know, taboo. Like, why? Why would you do something like that or what have you? But I, mean, I was actually at, this actually reminds me, I was at a function last weekend and I was sitting with a bunch of women. And one of the women, I, I was so, so drawn to her because she was so comfortable in herself and in her being. And she kept on talking about how masturbation is normal. It's a part of life. She does it all the time. She at least does it at least once a day, which got me like once a day. Woo. But at the same time, in the same breath, I was like, why not? Why is it seen as, why is it wrong for you to want to feel so comfortable in yourself that you would want to please yourself whenever you feel like it? Because it's your body. It's, it's you. It's your body. You see it every day. What's the problem with going into an adult store and coming out and buying a toy, buying a ring, buying a vibrator, buying a whatever, why is it seen as such a stigma? For me, I just don't get it. I don't think, I, I feel more than anything props to the women who, who are so comfortable in themselves that sexual pleasure for themselves, by themselves, isn't a problem. I don't see a problem in it. I the next question is, hi, <laughs> this question. Hi, Han, how does one introduce sex toys in a relationship? Now, it's a little bit of a challenge. So, so I'm thinking about family members and friends who will watch this video and think, oh my God, what is she talking about? But you know what? I'm 30. Okay, I'm 30. Um, but honestly, the thing is, 
some men will see it as if you are saying something about his inadequacy in the bedroom by wanting to introduce sex toys when at the same time I think the best thing to do is just to sit him or her down and just mention that you know what I feel like we could spice up make it a conversation that doesn't have to be serious you know or even when you're watching a movie and a, a sexual scene comes on or what have you and you're like you know what I've been thinking you know I've heard that there's some sort of toy that's like a ring a kind of thing and I would wonder Ure, how would it be if we tried something like that out and see how it goes down. I think there's no particular way in how you approach something like this. You just have to be mindful of what comes out of your mouth when you do. I think just try and um, make it jovial and make it casual rather than sitting them down and saying, yes, I'm going to shy pants. Can you talk about the good No. No. Try and uh, introduce it in a very light and casual manner and see how it goes down. If it doesn't, you might have a challenge on your hands, but you might be surprised. It just might go down real well. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss self. The next question is let's discuss self discovery and self love and why women don't love themselves enough. This is a very, very good question and statement because the, the, the thing is, I think society has built women up to be either you must be extremely perfect you must look a certain way you must be a certain kind of color you must see your body must look a particular way which is one a very 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 bad notion to impart on women especially young women because already that is the problem that will uh, encroach into a woman and make them not love themselves enough because they just feel like they are inadequate that they're not good enough it's it's the things that happen now that we see in society that that comes across to us and and, and makes women especially young women who are so easily um convinced who are so easily impressed impressionable women that they might end up feeling that they're not good enough and it becomes very very difficult to love yourself if you feel like you're not good enough you have to reach a place where you feel like i am enough there is nothing that is wrong with me my body is absolutely perfect for me my teeth are perfect my smile is perfect my, whatever my height is perfect i don't have to be yay tall in order to be considered as beautiful i don't have to have a waist like this in order to be considered as beautiful so it becomes really really hard it's what society has brought into our homes through televisions through magazines through internet um, that has made us feel and I speak collectively for women because we've gone through this at some point in our lives that has made us feel like we are inadequate and when you feel inadequate you feel like you're not good enough and it becomes really really hard for you to actually love yourself the biggest thing is to just get people to just start loving themselves by you know um, um, focusing on things that are more directed and geared towards self-love and self-appreciation and I think the world is moving in that direction, you know, with, with body positivity movements and women movements and what have you. We are moving in that direction. Whether we're moving fast enough is the trick question, but we're getting there. We will get there. So the last question is an, more of an advice question. She asked me not to mention her name, so I'm, I'm not going to as I haven't. She basically says... Hey Katya, I trust you well. I love how authentic you are. And more and more to real talk. Can I please be anonymous? Fine. Please advise me. I've known this person for three years now and I don't know what to call what I feel for him, given how long this has dragged out, even with how even with how without fail he shows how little to nothing I mean to him. Oh my god. I've been finding it hard to accept this reality with that i always entertain him whenever he calls or visits me there are small gestures that make me want to believe that he feels something but holds back from showing it i guess those are one of the reasons i hold on hoping he'd come around i beat myself up sometimes in that i feel like i'm too old and too strong and too self-aware and too confident to be having these kinds of confusions or dilemmas or problems please advise it's been dragging on for way too long who girl three years Okay, all right.
three years is far too long. I know we sometimes find ourselves in situations where, oh my gosh, I feel this particular way for someone and this and this, and we don't quite know what's going on and what have you, but three years is far too long. Um, I think that um, if he really felt a particular way about you, if he really, really felt a certain way about you and towards you, he would have told you and said it way before you hit the three year mark, way before, maybe even way before you hit the one year mark. Um, I love, it's nice to, to have the whole courtship phase and hanging out and whatever, but you also mentioned that even though he shows how little to nothing I mean to him, which is also another cause for concern. So I think rather than dragging it out and actually uh, 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 thinking that, oh, it'll work itself out, you are wasting your life away focusing on this one person. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't mean wasting in a negative way, but you are wasting your life away because you are so strong and you're so self-aware and you're so confident that you shouldn't be in this position. So the only way that I would advise is you sit him down and you talk to him about it. Like, honestly, yo, what's going on between us? Like, it's been three years of this, on and off, on and off, what is this? Because at the same time, you need to know that a situation needs to tell you that, okay, you know what, I need to detach, I need to cut from this. I probably would have cut way before three years, but I know how it is. I've been in a situation that's similar to that. But I feel like you honestly need to know so that you can keep it moving if it's not what you think it is. And any man, any man, any real strong man would have told you way before now. Um, so I think sit him down and talk to him and make yourself very firm and and uh, be firm and, and straight about it and strict and straight about it, whichever one. And let him know that, listen, I don't like A, B, C, D, what's going on? Let me know, blah, blah, blah. And then the answer that you get from there, if it's a hesitant answer like, I, eh, 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 no. Keep it moving. Move, continue on with your life, move on to the next best thing. If it is an answer like, hi, eh, eh, or if it is an answer like, you know what, I actually, yes, I like you, and this and that and the other, I'm sorry, I've just been blah, blah, blah. But if he's very firm in his response, then you will know what your next move will be from there. But I, three years, babes. No, you deserve a lot better than somebody who's going to be here and there, neither here nor there even sometimes. You deserve a lot, a lot more than that. So yeah, no, you might need to keep it moving, okay? Okay. All right, so one of my other wonderful friends who follows the channel also uh, said she would like me to talk about this uh, anonymously, of course. She says, I was diagnosed with depression at work and I, and I am in management level. I find at times that my confidence has suffered after I've had to be hospitalized for some time due to depression. Oh my God. I perform at work, but it is not my peak. At meetings, at times my voice gets lost. I don't know at times to articulate my ideas and solutions. My relationship with my boss director is suffering. I want to improve it, but I feel, but it, it's like I fear her. Oh my word, I have to overcome this. I am of value and I make a difference. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, if you guys follow my blog, you will know that I also recently got diagnosed with uh, GAD, which is a general anxiety disorder. But it's, this, is not a, uh, this is not about me. The thing is, this is a very, very difficult situation. I do not, I cannot speak on depression, I do not know, and I am not qualified to speak on depression, but however, I feel like if you are in a position where, dependent on what kind of relationship you have with your manager or your boss, your director, I think it would be a very, very good idea to actually mention this to her so that she knows what you are going through. Because you do say you perform. You do say you 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 are there, you're present at work, but you feel like sometimes your voice gets lost, which makes a lot of sense and I get where it's coming from. But I feel like if you do have a relationship that is, um, um, you know, sometimes with directors and your bosses, you, do, you can have a very good relationship in which you can mention something like this so that she knows so that she doesn't um, it'll make it more uh, 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 
it'll make her behavior more effective in how she addresses you and how she addresses your approach to work and things like that and when you're away from work how understandable it will be for her but I think for you because you recently got uh, diagnosed with something like this it's it's also uh, really baby steps right now I don't know how to advise this without I don't want to come across as if I'm well aware of this kind of situation because I'm not but I would just personally advise that you keep trying and you keep moving on and you you try and find ways like you read up on things like depression and you read up and how you can mitigate that you know some days and and just feel good on most days and you know how you're going to do that and what what would best work for you um i don't know how to respond to this question without feeling like I, I, I know it all when I don't know it all. Um, but I think that one of the biggest things that I would advise is that if you do have a good relationship with your boss, to mention something like this so that she knows she knows where you're coming from she knows what your struggle is and she knows that when you're not from when you're not at work this and this is going on and so so be it it'll make her treatment of you and her relationship with you more effective in terms of her knowing what the situation is um, but it's not something you have to share with your boss so it's 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 honestly sure it's a tough one uh, it's a tough one uh, sure that's a hard one okay all right so this is the end of real talk i'm sorry we had to end it on a little bit of a somber note but i did want to address her uh situation and i don't want to talk about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do have more questions for real talk then definitely put them down below in the comment section of this uh, video and then we can do another real talk q a sometime soon but yeah after that i feel really really heavy now but uh i'm gonna go and yeah i'll see you in the next video